Praise God, brethren, and uh, God is good that we have another opportunity of interaction. And um, this time I come with another word. The same word, but from, uh, well, because we read the word of God all the time, and uh, the reason why the Bible is demarcated by books, by chapters, by verses, so that we can have a daily menu. And so that where you stop today, you begin again another day. And so I come with our sufficiency is of God. Our sufficiency is of God. Our sufficiency is of God. I've said that three times to show the emphasis that I have had in my life about this. And we're going to base ourselves today from Second, Chron seven, second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4, 5, and 6. And I just want to read direct from the word of God. Apostle Paul writes this to the people of Corinth in his second letter, chapter 3, verse 4, 5, 6. And I want to read it this way, that such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Praise God, brethren. And this is the word of the Lord. And so we pray upon this word. Father, in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are able to read from your written word. Your word which is life, which was breathed by the Spirit and the Spirit which is life, which gives life. We pray the Lord you bless this message in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, our sufficiency is of God. And Paul says, not that we are sufficient, and some other version says, not that we are competent, not that we are competent by ourselves. There are lots of things that people have done. People have preached messages. People have done wonderful things. There are people that have built powerful houses. There are people that have read they have PhDs. They have done, done greatly. Even in the normal life down here, you could have done something and people say, yes, this is great. The moment someone appreciates you for something that you have done, it means you have done well. And so Paul did greatly. Paul did work. Paul preached the word of God. Of course, I will not go into his detail before he became Paul when he was Saul. But when he became Paul, he did greatly. And actually, in the Bible, Paul is the one that moved farthest. Paul is the one who wrote much more of the word of God because of all the letters that we have in the New Testament. Thirteen of them belong to Paul. So he was a great writer. He was a great preacher. Paul was a great man. Well, at one time, performing miracles. Yes, you remember the time when the snake coiled on his hand and he just shook it off into the fire. And Paul moved missionary journeys. Paul did it. The reason why we have all these letters mentioned, his letter to the Romans, his letter to the Corinthians, the first one, his letter to the Corinthians, the second, his letter to the Galatians, his letter to the Philippians, his letter to the Colossians, his letter to, you know, Ephesians, Thessalonians 1, Thessalonians 2, Jude, all these letters. Paul did great things. Now, 
when he talks about our sufficiency is of God, he knew what he was talking about because God had used him to do greatly. Of course, he compares, this compares with the people that have done great things and are proud. They want to say that I did it in my own strength. There are people who have been in power and they show their strength, that they are stronger. There are people that have built houses and they think that that is their strength. There are people that have read, they have made, you know, they have done greatly and they think that it is their strength. But Paul knew the secret. Which secret I am inviting you today? And I am actually humbling myself to know and to remember that if there is anything good that I've done, may I remember that my sufficiency is of God. If there is anything good that someone can appreciate me for, if there is anything good that I have, I can, that I have influenced in someone's life, if there is anything good in my family, my children, my wife, if there is anything good, our sufficiency is of God. And so I want to, to ask you, is there anything that you have done that you have accomplished in life? And of course, this compares itself with the pride that people have. I already mentioned that. And there are people that have done greatly. And because of the pride, they have collapsed. They have fallen. Now, you who knows the secret, I'm just reminding you from Paul's letter that he read, that he wrote to the Corinthians in, in chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. This is the second letter that I've read, that not that we are sufficient, not that I'm sufficient, not that you are sufficient. The reason why you are able to do greatly, to do wonderfully, to do well, but God is the author. And so, from the list, the list I mean the smallest, God makes the greatest. From the smallest, God raises men and women because our sufficiency is of God. And then if I want to give you a few, I will illustrate somehow from the word of God. First of all, from Matthew chapter 2 verse 6, the Bible talks about Jerusalem. And the Bible says, but you, Jerusalem, the least, the smallest, that through you, though you are little among the nations of the earth. Of course, actually, this is where the Savior comes from. And so, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one who is the ruler of Israel. And so the Bible claimed, proclaims. And so Jerusalem taken as the list. Because Jerusalem was taken as the list and the ruler of the whole world comes from, comes through and rules the world, the sufficiency is of God. Now, that is the land. Now, we have had people that have can testify that our sufficiency is of God. That from the least, from the smallest, God raises up people. Joseph, you remember, was the least among his brothers. And remember how he was hated and many things happened, but his sufficiency was of God. He was raised from grass to grace. Yes, when he was in Egypt, he was actually many things happened to him, but he became number two in the land of Egypt. The sufficiency is of God. I'm just bringing this out to prove that the sufficiency, our sufficiency is from God. Now, Jacob, the younger, of course, actually, he had his brother who is Esau. And by God's favor, he became a friend of God and the father of nations. Give, even despite his tricky star life, I want to tell you that God raised Joseph, Jacob. Many, many people would say that actually of all people, Jacob wouldn't count. But the, the sufficiency is of God. Abel the younger, took God's favor. God raised even when he was killed by his brother. The Bible talks favorably about him. David, the younger, the least among his brothers, took 
God's favor and became a man after God's own heart. Not by sufficiency of human mind, but by God's own sufficiency. Now, friends, I have mentioned Joseph, I've mentioned Jacob, I've mentioned Abel, I've mentioned David, how about Ephraim and Manasseh, the two brothers. This, our sufficiency is of God. And during our time, my brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you that God is the one who gives us strength. God is the one who gives us wisdom. God is the one who gives us knowledge. God is the one who gives us the ability to do what we are able to do. So my brothers and sisters, from the list, our sufficiency is of God. I've kept repeating it because it is a message that God gave me to bring to you this hour. That our sufficiency is from none else. And just like I do the reading again as I wind up, this, the Bible is saying such is our confidence that we have through Christ toward God. And he says that not that we are sufficient. I, every daddy, am not sufficient in myself to claim anything as coming from me. But my sufficiency is from God. You can also claim the same. Your sufficiency is from God. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers? And I thank God that I am able to propagate this, to sit here and mention and say a word because our, my sufficiency is from God. Your sufficiency is of God, be it in the physical things, be it in the spiritual things, be it in the social things, be it in whatever emotional name of them. Your sufficiency, my sufficiency is of God. And so I pray for you. That the God whom we trust, the God who we be, whom we believe in, makes you something out of nothing. Makes you somebody out of nobody. Makes you one out of nothing. So that you keep moving on from one level to another. Because my sufficiency, your sufficiency is of God. So Paul tested it. Paul testified it about it. And we shall continue testifying that our sufficiency is of God. And so I leave you with God's blessing. God, who is above all, remain with you and give you a wise heart to know that your sufficiency, my sufficiency is of God. Keep trusting, keep believing, keep in there, keep keeping on. And God will grant you the desires of your heart in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 